Crockett fires wide, and Brian Crockett still looking for his first goal of 2006. I mentioned how hot he was at the end of last year. This guy scored 18 goals in the final four games. And Brian Crockett looking to get on track here in 2006. Leister doing a nice job on Lavelle. There's Crockett. In the crease. Play on. Tried to take the feed from Lavelle. And it was broken up by the Black Knights. Well, both of those players came as advertised. Leister and, of course, Mr. Walker. They've done very, very well today. And this game is very close. Well, the Orange at least trying to get in closer and not settling for the outside shots there. But they came up empty on that possession. And every possession now becomes so much more important as Brooks Corvin looks for a little pick there. Corvin, a freshman for this Black Knight squad. Behind the case to Scheel. And now the Orange coming out. Evan Brady out top, watching Corvin. Panarelli still glued to John Walker. He knocked the ball loose. Kicks it to his teammate. Brady picks it up. Steve Panarelli's playing a terrific game. Dan Hardy gave it up. Buck two fires and scores. And the Orange have their lead back to two with 8.30 to play. Those unsettled situations, when they're getting that ball up there, they're able, they've been put three or four in. It's nice to get that, and they've gotten it off of some great plays. Panarelli did a great job of starting that off. He won't get an assist, but he should. He kicked the ball over here. Was going to see it. Oh, great replay. He takes it away from Walker. Watch the foot right there. Great job. Looking ahead, got it down quickly. Evan Brady, the long stick midfielder, did, and then Buck firing low. And makes it 11 9. To Dan Hardy. Yeah, nice look by Hardy. As we just had another 22 up here in the booth, and 22 comes up big down there as Craig Hammond battling for the ball, but the Black Knights win it. And they will back it out a little bit and set up shop. Ryan Chase coming out of the field. Nick LaRusso as well. Watch Seven Obringer. He's been uh, he's been able to get open in any kind of unsettled situations. He's been flashing on the on the crease and has been one on one with the goalie a number of times. Chase fakes the pass. Colacini there to block the shot. And we have an officials timeout with 7:50 to play in the orange. A two goal lead. But no two goal lead safe here this afternoon. And the Black Knights will have to come back one more time. Down by two, under eight to go. We're at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York this afternoon for lacrosse. Syracuse at Army. Mark Larson, Dale Drypolcher. Good to have you with us on opening day of 2006 for the Orange and the Black Knights. And the Syracuse Orange with a two goal lead. Under eight minutes to play as they have battled all game long with the Black Knights have not been able to build the lead to more than two goals, but also haven't trailed since early on. And Colacini had his 10th save before we went to commercial. I think he's played a, a, a real solid, better than solid game for Syracuse. Uh, a guy that they had talked about when I talked to coach, it was real close between he and Myers and Oh, and in front, and we're going to see the man ended up no. in the crease. They're going to wave it off. They're consistent. That's what you got to be as a referee. So still an 11 to 9 game. See, they're going to force that long pass. Guadagnolo, Panarelli, back and forth they go. And now Panarelli is going to bring it up. Yeah. Kenny Nims on the run. Nims short stick got right there, boxes it up. Over to Babbles. And the Orange look for that elusive three goal lead. And try and put a little cushion between themselves and the Black Knights. Now they can be patient. Not that they haven't been before, but they got the next midfield and Abbott's in, the freshman. Babbles a sophomore. 
Two of the top four winningest programs in college lacrosse history. Division one. Bucktooth. Oh. Score the last two for the Orange. He almost had a hat trick. He should get a little spray paint and X'd it right there because that's where he's been his last two that's goals. His spot. That's his spot, and they let him have it again. Uh, I would be uh, concerned if I was Army. They've got uh, 27s on him. Narkum. And he's done a good job. He hadn't done anything until this last uh, couple of minutes, and he's had two important goals for, for the Orange. And Narkum has played well this yeah. afternoon. But Bucktooth just getting enough room to unload the cannon. Black Knight's fourth all-time Division I college lacrosse wins behind Hopkins, Syracuse, and Hobart. So two very proud programs that go back a long way. And actually both opening up their 87th season of lacrosse this afternoon. That's off Army. And the Orange looking to spoil opening day for the Black Knights for the fifth straight year. Six minutes and ten seconds away from another 1-0 start. Orange will hit the road next week and then be back here with Georgetown on Friday the 10th. We got Syracuse for 21, 21 turnovers, which is uh, maybe to be expected your first game. But uh, you really got to tighten them up here with uh, six, six minutes left. That last one could have been a turnover, but uh, it was off of Army. Lavelle makes the move, spins, finds the cutter, yeah. Abbott scores again. Matt Abbott out of Nottingham High School has a couple of goals. And finally, the Orange able to establish a little breathing room now with under six minutes to play. I think the defense is a little tired. And watch Lavelle. He draws, a, he draws two. Now somebody's opening, and then there's a trailer right there. Abbott cuts down and gets inside that zone defense and buries it so nice job by Abbott so they've uh, been able to this last couple minutes penetrate that defense which has been so tough for the first three and a half quarters and Joe Alberici calling a timeout and Dale we talked about the shot selection and they're getting the shots in close now right and uh, you know they're taken from the 10 12 15 yards and not even really good angles at, at different points well that's part of that is you know you get frustrated but of course uh, they've gotten uh, they've gotten some good shots off but Fortin very early stopped them so he's played a good game between the pipes like the local kid from Liverpool so both goalies have, have showed up and played very very well but Syracuse Bucktooth had those two goals and uh, they're getting that penetration and that defense for Army looks a little tired. And another reminder for you that Monday afternoon we'll be back here at the Carrier Dome for more Syracuse lacrosse on the women's side as the Orange women look for a 2-0 start. They'll be hosting the Dartmouth Big Green Monday afternoon at 3.30. Join Chris Watson, Kathy Taylor for the Orange and the Big Green Monday afternoon 3.30 right here on Time Warner Sports. One of the things in talking to John Desco, the things that he liked this year that he didn't like last year, depth. You see the guys playing, and, and I, I think, as I said, just Army defense looks a little tired. They, they've really been, been pushing them, and when you can bring in some freshmen in a, in a third midfield uh, and, 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 and mix your, uh, your lines up and get good, effective play like that, uh, that's what he likes to see. So I think that's a, a real key for them, the depth, especially at midfield, and attack. They've been, they've been running four or five people at attack, so Syracuse looks like they've, they've got a lot of good depth this year. There is the score by quarters, and the Orange with four goals in the first and four so far in the fourth quarter to take control, and 12 goals scored by eight different players, so there's some more of that depth. You don't have one or two guys out there gathering the majority of the points, and Nathan Kenny gathers up another faceoff. Shows how important it is on the wings. Uh, you know, the guy who controls the ball, it's nice but he very seldom is going to be able to control the ball completely and go down you know, down Main Street there. So your wings are very important. Kenny, uh, the defensive midfielder, nice job of coming up with that faceoff, and he's going to check out and get an offensive guy in, and Syracuse is going to take the time. Poor pass, but Hardy brings it in. And Kenny, one of the two Virginia transfers. I mentioned the Orange on the road next week. They're at Virginia. So Yavoli and Kenny have to be looking forward to that one. And now here's Rommel taking a run. Got a good look. And it was knocked down in front. And the Black Knights with under five minutes to go. On the attack, down by three. Watch Obringer. He always seems to show up here. Oh, oh right out front. Open Trying again. to feed it. And then Guadagnolo sent Eric Nerdalen to the turf. And that's going to be a possession 
call against Syracuse, so they're going to lose possession. But they had them open. Watch the crease. But consider the message delivered. Yeah. Don't come in here. Oh, my goodness. A little bit high in the stick for Guadagnolo. And lucky Nerdalen's okay. This is Shield trying to get around Guadagnolo. Oh, got a step. Cardosa. Slide. Got behind him. Uh, no cutter there. Walker knocked to the turf, lost his footing. And now Walker out top. Evan Brady all over him. Long stick midfielder keep on his hands. There's a double. Gets some help. Now three guys converging on John Walker who hacks at the stick. Somebody's got to be in the hole. Syracuse still got to play defense. Ball way up in the air now. Guadagnolo pulls it down. And the Orange faithful really understand the game of lacrosse here. It's one thing coming from Orange. Oh! oh, bad pass by Guadagnolo. Did a great job all the way down and then threw it out of bounds. But coming from Oregon, the people out there really understand track and they know when to clap. It's not just always when the race is over, but they can sense things going on in the game, not just the goals. And the same thing for the uh, lacrosse community here as the folks here really understand the game so well and applaud things like ground balls and clears. And so there was a big turnover right there as they, they forced the long diagonal pass and really set up there. Uh, Carroza was waiting for the ball. Fortunately, he didn't touch it because it went out of bounds off of Army. So they, by playing good defense, riding hard, forcing that long diagonal pass, Syracuse gets the ball back after a poor pass on their part. So these are the things that both teams are going to be working on. Both teams have thrown the ball away uh, when they shouldn't have. Let's see if uh, Syracuse got 340 left, what they're going to do with a three-goal lead. I'll tell you what, they're not going to take any bad shots. Content to work it around and work some time off that clock. And of course, when it gets under two minutes, they've got to keep it in the box. Then they have to keep it in the attack area. Yep. Ramos got it with his 3-9 and uh, mechanical, oh, wow, my mechanical goodness. engineering. They throw the ball away, just as I said it. He and Yavoli not on the same page. Well, you know, they don't do a lot of passing in biomechanical engineering. <laughs> I dropped that, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, almost like getting an A-minus on a test for Greg Rommel. Doesn't happen very often. They have 99 average in high school. How about that? Yep. Here's Elbringer well, he's creating played, some space, and his stick well. was checked just as he delivered. He's played well. What was that for Army got there at the end? Trouble picking the number up. But. Carosa got a stick on Obringer's stick as he tried to trigger the shot. There's the they're doing a lot of a lot of cutting here from the crease, a little circle. Syracuse just playing man to man. John Wright all over near Dalen. Let's find Walker there. If you see Walker, you're going to see Panarelli. Right on net, and a shot to go. A high bouncer from John Burton. So Burton brings him to win two, 2.33 left. You know, you can talk about faceoffs all you want. Syracuse is 16 and 9, but this is the one that's most important. You're going to see Burton get the jump right there as he gets by number 17, Carroza, and then gets a good look and just takes a little off of it. Nice hop as he got the first bad play I've seen Colaccini make. He went down, ball went up. You don't go down to the last minute. John Burton out of Jordan Elbridge. I'm sure he's got some friends and family in the stands. And he's cut the deficit to two now, but a big faceoff win for the oh. Orange. Can they keep possession? They've thrown it away the last two times. Yeah, well, oh, you hate to see that. And John Desco's red hair is going to start to turn a little gray. This continues. Well, Rommel's back in. He's got Crockett in. All experienced guys. And the attack behind, he's got Yavoli there. Yavoli looking at the clock. He's got to stay in, yeah. Now under two minutes, they'll have to keep it in. Now Hardy's. That attack area. Hardy's got a short stick on him at 6-4, and he's got uh, number 21 on him. Rhodes, 5-10. Early Orange working some clock here. Up by two. Looking to win their 10th consecutive season opener. Boy, yeah, stick protection is very important here. <laughs> really is because they're going to start 
The goalie will come out here in a second. He's going to start doubling. He's going to see right now. He's out. Goalie's out playing defense. So an empty cage. Yeah, well, they can double the ball the all the time. Knights. Ball comes loose. And a timeout taken by the Syracuse Orange. John Desco wants to talk it over. Hey, you got it. Use it. 119 to play. The empty net. Temptation for someone to go for it. And the Black Knights hoping they can pick up a loose ball and head the other way. It's been a great game. I'm very impressed. You know, and I, I don't think uh, the way Syracuse, uh, people think that, uh, you know, they're going to blow people away, four, five, six goals. There's too much parity in lacrosse. There's too many guys getting good players, and including uh, Army. And uh, they've got a nice team, got a great concept here. Obringer's played well offensively. Obviously, Walker a star. And Fullerton did a terrific job in the goal. It's not over yet, but uh, these teams are going to be tough. It's going to be harder and harder to make that, uh, that final four, I'll tell you that. Well, the Orange, it doesn't get any easier, as you said, Dale. Next week on the road at number four, Virginia. And then back home with Georgetown, who's ranked number seven. So you get out of the shoot with three straight games against top 15 teams. But I'll tell you what it does. It brings the great crowd here. I got to tell you, I, I get in line once in a while. There's a guy from uh, England, Woody, uh, and he's going to come to the, to the UMass game. Uh, I just watched it online. Uh, he's uh, uh, born and bred in Great Britain, but he loves Syracuse lacrosse. He's going to come watch that game, and uh, that just shows you what kind of fans they get. And he watches on television. I don't know how he gets it, but uh, it will be <laughs> interesting. Quite the satellite. Yeah, he might, yeah. Well, cable, of course. Yeah. Now, first of all, a guy from England named Woody? Well, I, I, that's his, uh, that's his okay. screen, that's his screen All right. name. Yeah, good crowd out here this afternoon. Great crowd. The weather outside may be less than delightful, but inside it's nice and cozy and warm in the orange. We're going to send the home crowd home happy. Uh, Nims. Oh, nice move. Nims Split him. splits the double team. But you know how about what? that? He Good didn't, poise for the freshman. But he didn't succumb to taking the shot because even though it was open, there was somebody kind of sliding back door to, to help. And nice. Al Hardy also splitting the double team. So how about the freshman doing the job here? Killing some clock. And now Brian Crockett had a stick check, but hang on. Under a minute to go. And another timeout going to be called for the Orange. Down to 49 seconds. That clock not going fast enough for John Desco. Last time the Orange lost the season opener was 1996. And all time here at the Dome in Dome openers, they are 23 and two. So you don't see the Orange lose here on opening day very often. And they led six to five at the half. It has been six to five again here in the second half. It's time to wrap this one up. A lot of shots. <laughs> Syracuse unofficially uh, 43 shots or so. That's a lot of shots. But uh, one of the things that they talked about was the, the new offense. But uh, I think that they've got, they got a lot of potential. They're playing a lot of freshmen, a lot of people who didn't play much last year and a lot of freshmen. So Syracuse is only going to get better. And Coach Alberici with his new defense out there really bothered the Orange for a good part of this game. Well, yeah, I mean, look, Bucktooth didn't even right in the get on the board there, right? yeah. Second quarter and the third quarter really bottled up the orange. And Alberici is saying he's, you know, not going to come in and change a whole lot after 22 years under Jack Emmer. Just going to throw in a couple of wrinkles and hope to add to what they have been doing to continue their success. And I think, you know, they may not come out on top today, but he'll still feel pretty good about the way his team played as Nims breaks through. And that was an easy one. He paid for it. Flags come flying. Kenny Nims scores his first career goal for the Orange, and he'll remember it because he'll have a nice bruise on his side for a while as booze rain down. A little frustration showing for the Black Knights. Well, you wouldn't think that that would happen with, with Army, I guess. They make the living on being disciplined, but Wijzinski lost his head for just a moment. Nims dumped it in the net. 13th goal of the game for the Orange. Kenny Nims is still down on the field. John, uh, 
Desco going to go out and check this. Uh, was a late hit. There's no doubt about it. It was blatant. I mentioned Kenny Nims, his father Tom. Great the goalie. Great goaltenders here. And also, he's got some cousins on this team. Greg yeah. Narosky from the Watertown area and Brendan Loftus. Are a couple of his cousins. So a, a family get together every time the Orange take the field. And Nims being helped back to his feet. And still not looking 100%. He'll feel that one for a while. So goal number one of Kenny Nim's career comes with a certain <laughs> price. It'll be memorable. He'll remember what happened immediately after that <laughs> yeah, first career goal. Right. So the Orange up by three again with 42 seconds to play. And look at Assault away, their 11th straight win over the Black Knights of Army. How about uh, Colacini? Because uh, in talking to John earlier this week, he said, you know what? You may see two goalies. You know, we, we, and we, we may still think, may. We, 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 you're right. We may still see. Myers is uh, right there. But, boy, I tell you what, he, he played well. And uh, it's nice to be able to say we got two guys who can play like that. But on the other hand, he's also more than once as Hardy takes some abuse. Got it to Rommel. Look at that. Five Army guys converging. Flags coming down. And more flags as things are getting a little testy out there and chippy. Now you're going face face to face with Tori Sokol down there. I think every official is throwing every flag he has. And uh, they're going to toss some folks. Anyway, I started to say more than once Desco referred to Colacini's situation is very similar to Pfeiffer's. Maybe he can do the same thing. Right. Red shirt his first season and then come in and start every game the next four years. And we mentioned at the top, Pfeiffer winning a couple of national championships and nine games in the NCAA tournament. Tied for first all time here in Syracuse. Left quite a legacy, but how about the action down there? It's getting yeah, there was a, a little cheap. and Yeah. It's poor, poor Rommel. Rough. I tell you what. <laughs> Where'd all these guys in the black uniform in the game? <laughs> I think it's don't pass it to me. Yeah. Well, and of course, you have to keep it in the box. <laughs> you have to keep it in the box. And they're, they're picking the flags up. They've been. Now the Army guys are going to It's a nice gesture, up. yeah. Yeah, right. Well, they they put pile, them pile, them pile them up for them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they have enough space on the board for the uh, all the penalties. It's like a hockey game. 28 seconds left in this one, and this is something neither coach really wants to see, the end of it ending up like this. You know, a lot of local guys, too. Fullerton, as we've said a couple of times, the, the goalie from Liverpool playing for Army, done and a his, terrific job. And his, his twin brother, twin Patrick, brother, yep. also on the team. Yep. One of the midfielders. So the officials sorting this one out. And we will eventually take off the final 28 seconds. Long 28 seconds. Is that official going to keep all the flags for himself? I think he, they, yeah, yeah, I think he's got them all. <laughs> well, there better not be another penalty. Or... And I'll throw the hat. All right, well, the Black Knights are going to start with possession. And not for long. Bucktooth took it away. Fullerton scrambling back to the cage. Bucktooth, couple of moves, and he put it in. He's got the hat trick. And a nice way to cap it off. His younger son, Brett Jr., born six months ago today, and Brett Sr. doing a little celebrating of his own. Watch the movie makes here. Am I going to get a hit? No. And then he takes it from the left hand, cross hand, brings it back right hand, and Mr. Bucktooth gets his third. Well, he had the hat trick all in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it took him a little while, but uh, he's warmed up. Of course, there's a lot of bodies out there. There's, so, so there's, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys for uh, Army. So they're down two. And even if Syracuse is down, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three, so there's still four. Eight on eight. Yeah, yeah, but there's four fewer bodies out there. So there's a lot more space. 
let's just let's run it. Let's running time. Let's get these 18 seconds over with. There's some discussion going on down at center line, and really at this point, it's all moot. The Orange are going to win this one. I'm sure both coaches would like to get into the locker room, but and Army's going to call a timeout. Joe Albarese is going to call a timeout anyway. Like you said, if you use them, got them. And so they will. And if, if it were me, I think I'd be saying, listen, guys, 18 seconds left. Let's not do anything stupid out there. Let's just get this over with, learn from it, come back the next game. I mean, let's face it. They're taking on the number five team in the country on their home turf, opening day. They played pretty well, even despite these last few minutes. But... Brett Bucktooth, one more look at that last goal. Well, you see the body is going to come from the left right there. Now watch him go cross-handed, brings it back right-handed, and Fullerton commits. He, he puts it in. As we said, they're playing with uh, four fewer bodies on the field, both teams down two, and uh, creates a lot of space there. And you give Brett Bucktooth any space, he'll, he knows what to do with it. All right, the Black Knights heading back out onto the field. And they will try and regroup and hit into their second game of the year. They will be on the road again next weekend at Lehigh as they open up Patriot League play. Black Knights also with games at Cornell this year. Will also play the Colgate Raiders, so a couple of more Central New York schools on the schedule for the Black Knights. Coming off an 11-win season last year and trying to build on that, but again, much different looking team. The new head coach and the leading scorer, goal scorer gone. Yeah, I think Army Army's going to be very good. I think, as I said, I think the competition at all the levels is going to be, it's going to be terrific. Black Knights, one final push toward the net. It's Sheil, a high bouncer, a little too high, and over the cage. Nine seconds on the clock as Walker goes back to retrieve. There was a slashing penalty called on four unnecessary roughnesses to on each side. We've had four unnecessary roughness penalties, two for each side, and a slashing penalty here in the final minute. Walker denied another time by Colaccini. Peter Colaccini, a couple of big saves at the end, and that's how the game comes to an end. Peter Colaccini winning in his first game as the goaltender for the Orange. Syracuse wins it by four, 14 to 10. And John Desco still unbeaten against the Black Knights. It's a four goal game, but it really was a lot closer than that all the way. It was, it was a, it was a very close game. Some questions answered for Syracuse, at least partially answered. They found a goalie. Face-offs are not as bad as perhaps they thought they might be. And uh, the offense uh, can generate. Offense got it going definitely in that fourth quarter as they scored six times in the fourth and pulled out a four goal win on opening day of 2006. So the Orange off to a good start. We'll come back and wrap this one up from the Carrier Dome, 14-10 the final. For the fifth straight year, the Orange have opened up the season with a win over the Black Knights of Army. 14 to 10, our final here at the Carrier Dome this afternoon. And the Orange and the Black Knights meeting in midfield, shaking hands and a little bit rough at the end. Uh, things got a little chippy out there, but the Orange uh, pulled out a good win. Well, that's what lacrosse is. This is not a game for the faint-hearted. <laughs> <laughs> there were some big hits on both sides out there, and Peter Colaccini really came up big. In nice his job. first game as goaltender here. Yep, Richard Freshman, they done a great job. All right, he's uh, standing by with us down on the field. Let's talk to Peter Colaccini. Uh, Peter, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. How'd you feel out there? Uh, kind of a rough start for you. You gave up two quick ones, but then you really settled down. Yeah, yeah, I got a little nervous in the beginning there. Got the jitters out. Um, had a couple nice shots and caught me off guard there. Um, but try to get focused, and uh, our team got back into it. So, 
As the game went on, did you feel more comfortable with the defense? You guys looked like you were uh, communicating and, uh, and doing things a little bit better as the game wore on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we were causing, uh, causing a situation for them to score, and, um, and we settled it down, settled into our regular defense, and we played pretty good man-to-man uh, -man defense and did a good job. All right, you end up winning by four. Next up, number four, Virginia. I mean, it, it, the schedule just doesn't get easy, does it? No, we got Virginia, Georgetown, Hopkins. Those are three of the best teams in the country right there. Um, we had to go back to drawing board and uh, uh, keep on working hard, and uh, hopefully things will go our way next week. All right, Peter Colaccini, thanks for being with us. Thank you very much. He's Take care. Player of the Game brought to you by the Fernandez Automall. So the Orange start out 1-0. What do you think? They ready for Virginia next week? Well, you know, are you ever ready for Virginia yeah. if you have to go down there? But I'll tell you what, they're more ready than they were before this game. A good win for the Orange, and that'll do it from the Carry Dome. The Orange win it 14-10 despite Mike Obringer's best efforts. Black Knights go down here in Syracuse. For Dale Dry Pulcher and our producer-director Chuck McKean, Mark Larson saying thanks for watching this afternoon as the Orange. Again, for the 10th straight year, our 1-0.